Welcome, welcome to the Let's Talk Mashiach podcast. I'm Yisrael Goldstein, and with us today is a very, very special guest that I have had the pleasure and honor of knowing for many years already, all the way from back in Yeshiva, in uh, Brunois, actually, in France, Rabbi Zalman Laufer, who is also a Mechanach, a teacher in... Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ale Menachem. Very nice. And um, yeah, so the topic, the idea that we're trying to go for here is finally that we can open up this conversation, talk about it, discuss it, bring it up, and figure it out in a sense. Sometimes it seems to me as if this whole topic. Which whole topic? Oh, the topic of Mashiach. As in the which, Gula, everything that comes the with Gula, it. The idea that the Rebbe gave us the mission that we have something that we could and should do to make it happen, bring it, bring it about. Yeah. The whole topic of Mashiach generally, sometimes it feels like it became a little bit of a taboo. Over the recent years, I don't know, this might be a bit of a negative angle to look at things. Maybe I should just focus on the positive. You tell me. I'm just rambling here. You feel free to interject at any point. Um, but I feel that... We call ourselves Chabad Lubavitch, and the Rebbe is our Rebbe that we always, you know, are tuned into every last thing that he requests of us or instructs us or guides us about. If it was to go out in the world and approach a Yid and ask them, hey, are you Jewish? Would you like to put on tefillin? We go for it. We do it. Even though it was so crazy and so unimaginable, we have to understand, back then in the 60s, it was absolutely crazy notion to go out there to a random person in the street and do this is like nowadays going and talking to someone about Mashiach um, it's very it was very much out of the box very difficult but we went ahead and we did it we broke that barrier we worked through it and many people even mocked us and many people even gave us a hard time about it but through the years now Chabad Lubavitch isn't the only ones that are going around there doing Kiruv and approaching Yidin and putting on Tefillin Many, many other circles of Yidin from other different kinds of organizations also do that as well. And if it's going out and giving a woman candles for Shabbos, or if it's kashering someone's house, or putting up mezuzahs, etc., etc. When the Rebbe tells us about something, theoretically, ideally, it seems like what we teach ourselves and what we teach our students and children is that the Rebbe says we do. The Rebbe says jump, we ask how high, sort of thing. Like... And not just because we're sheeples that just mindlessly follow someone. It's because the whole idea of Yidin following Moshe Rabbeinu, everything that's explained about that. So the Rebbe, it seems, told us something about Moshiach, that we are in a time, in a particularly special time, that has to do with the coming of Moshiach, and that we can do things about it, and we should do things about it, spread the word, make it a reality. And it seems like for a while we were all excited about it and into it and getting all hyped up about it, particularly, as they say, in the years of 90, 91, 92, you know, and Bays. And then, you know, the unfortunate, uh, what do you want to call it, the Chabad Lubavitch trauma started taking place, so to speak, where the Rebbe, you know, wasn't well and... It seemed like that was a very strong hit to our conscience and to our operating and to our story, like what's going to be, what's the story, and particularly when it came to Gimel Tammuz and Tavshin and Dalet, that really hit us very, very hard. And ever since then, it seems like it was a pretty rocky journey. Again, this is just how it seems to me, Bichitzenius. I'm just a guy that's in the Chabad Lubavitch community. I've been growing up as a kid during those years. I was a bacher during the, the, the beginning of the, of the years 2000 and up. And I'm just observing and trying to figure out what this is all about. What I've seen is that this topic has become a little bit mired with controversy. There's become a whole machlekes that happened out of it. There's these whole two different groups called mishachistin and called antis. And it's very, very important to... to to argue about that and to fight for, for this side or this way of looking at things or that way of looking at things. That was very, very important, apparently, for many, many chassidim throughout many years. And uh, actually progressing the mission that the Rebbe told us, hey guys, let's bring Mashiach already. I don't know where that went somewhere along the way. It's almost like the whole controversy made the whole thing so uncomfortable that by now it's almost like we prefer not to go there even. 
if there's any situation where maybe we can or it comes up about the topic of Moshiach, we might prefer to kind of just avoid it. Oh, we can talk about uh, news. We can talk about uh, what's been happening lately with, with Parnasso, with uh, what's been going on with, with Trump, <laughs> what's been going on with the making money and business and this and that. Yeah, that, that will schmooze about with a fellow year by Shachris, uh, hopefully before or after Shachris, not during Shachris. But um, how about one year asking another year, hey, what's going on with the story of us doing what we're all about to bring Moshiach? As Chassidim of the Rebbe, when is it okay to look at the calendar and say, dude, it's been 25 years since Gimel Tamus. It's been 28 years since the Rebbe told us, I am giving this over to you. You guys finish off the job, make it happen. When are we going to follow up about that? It seems like life has possibly become about just going on and surviving and doing what we need to do. Be, be good Yidin, for sure. Be good Chabad Lubavitcher Yidin even, going and doing Miftzayim and doing Shlichus and, and it, really tremendous, amazing things. So many Shluchim have, have been spreading out throughout the world in the, in the recent years as well. We can't discount that at all, you know. The number was, I don't know how much back in, in the 90s. 2,000, 3,000? By now it's already 5,500. Tremendous things have been achieved in, in the recent years and new projects and new websites and new apps and new ideas. So amazing things have been happening. That's for sure, undeniable. But I'm rambling a little too much. What? What? Is... <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your thoughts on any of that. You said you're speaking about the negativity. True. No. Help, you have to help me out on that. I'm too much from that point of view. Upon him, I think we have to a little backtrack. Let's, let's rewind a little bit. You started the whole Mashiach thing. Started what? I mean, you have. In our personal story, which he said starts from the Rebbe's Nesiyas and Be'ikr in the latest years, that we, we hear about that. So you were saying you were a child growing up at that time. I, me and you were both young at that age. So for us to come and say we, we are assuming that this is how the, it was in certain years and this is how it slowly evolved, I don't know if we were such good Edim, Edusiriyya, to say exactly what's going on. Uh-huh. What I mean, why am I mentioning this? Is because Zichr the Rebbe is breaking through a new Indian. This idea of Mashiach is breaking through a new Indian, like the Rebbe says, this Ashar. The new Indian, the Shlichus, comes in Chayasara, in right? The new Indian and the Shlichus comes around every once in a while, and now the new Shar is Mashiach, yeah? That everything is for the Gula. That's the Kavana for everything in the Shlichus. So that's, that's a new thing that I was discussing, right? Now, Shluchas also, the first time that Abayim came to Chassidim and said, it's time to leave your uh, you know, it wasn't simple. Not everybody just picked up. It took a while, but Baruch Hashem, Chassidim, you know, like you said, we, Chassidim have good Yisoydas, and they uh, followed up, and now it became Mikubal at Kededa Eilam. It's following now, the same thing that's he said. The Pashas of Yulam Yisra Shlema is a similar Nakoda. That the Rebbe also starts a new thing, and the Eilam was and the Iker the Eilam were standing right around the Rebbe. Shluchim that were geographically distant. What the Rebbe says, I mean, you have a personal mindset. The geographic difference is not necessarily Rishuk be be True. But uh, you have sometimes that it didn't pick up right away, and even for Chassidim right away, it wasn't something that everybody was right away to be makabel. Isn't the hate? And in the meantime. This is what you start saying, it's Gekumen Chazayinot, or Akim Gimel Tamuz. And it definitely causes uh, some people to have uh, questions, and it's not clarity, it's not that they have this constant reminder, this is it, and this is it, and this is it. You know, sometimes you have uh, a thing that the Rebbe might have mentioned for a few years, and then, you know, it's say something else, you might have heard Mr. in the early years, everyone was going to Mr. now you hardly hear about it. Right. It was at Kufa, so Zichr, as Nishkin Zach Mashiach, is not a... It's not a coming sense. It's here just for a while. It's clear that it's here to stay. I'm saying we need to recognize to this stay. idea that, but that it's clear that it's not wasn't such a simple thing. And right. in other words, you want to come with the premise that if we were there and then we all lost it. I don't think so. I think we were good. That ever starts us off, and now we have something that we continue. I want to say a lot of befeirish chesedim of the rabbi are doing this, continue doing this, yes. and yes. do, and they have the same way you described earlier about. 
at Chassidim, our play on the whole Eilon, that now became a normal thing. I'm sure you hear many stories, we all, we, we, we make a big deal about advertising these things, that many of us from the Andre Kreis and Amazon, even Kachan and the Guha, no question about it. All because of the Rebbe breaking it through by Chassidim and Chassidim breaking it out to the world. And this is a continuing process. It's not getting less and less. It's not getting, it's more and more that more and more of the Velt, even by the Goyim, the Musag of the Gyula is becoming much more something that we're looking forward to and waiting for and uh, things. So I think Chassidim are definitely moving on. Um, to Nukudas, about what you said, number one, I don't know if to say that everybody was there and suddenly became a Machlekes, like suddenly it was. It was always something that wasn't easily uh, miscabel. Uh-huh. The, the fact that uh, we don't hear and see the Rebbe with our own fleshka eyes now is uh, is allowing our own fleshka eyes to, to play around with, with, with this Indian. Um, but we're definitely continuing to do. I want to say another Nakoda, we also both live in Crown Heights. Right. And because we live in Crown Heights, there's, we get a little confused. There's a lot more confusion going on over here. And sometimes we're confusing the lack of kaching in Mashiach with the lack of kaching in a lot of things. In other words, I wouldn't say there's a per se, when it comes to the Gola, suddenly does is shiver. But all other things we could, I mean, you mentioned a few times you could be a chesed and everything. I, 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 perhaps I beg to differ with what you said. I wouldn't say that yeah, everyone's fine with all the chesed guy, just Mashiach is a shiver in a kuna. I think you see the Mokhish, that is a Shvera Kaiden, and a lot of things, and Gula is the cherry on top. Gula is the ultimate of, of Yiddishkeit. So it's a Shvera in, in, in the Shema Yisrael Hashem again, Shem Echad, Shvera in Yichiyad, Neinu, Meinu, 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 yeah? So the Chmela, we live amongst a lot of this, and the Chmela, maybe you're mix, letting it mix in and filter in, and you're trancing, since you're a big kacher in the Gula means Vashlema, so you see everything through the lens of Mashiach, and Ashrein is Mashiach. I'll tell you why. I, I, I see that, that if we if we koch in Mashiach, it kind of contains and schleps along with it all the rest of it. Oh. Like if we, okay. right? This yeah. is how I, I remember Rebbe David Forrest back in Brunois. He used yeah. to bring about this a lot, this idea that you shoot the arrow to the center of the, the target, mm. and then you draw the circles around it to mm. make as if you should. Because the central Nakuda of the whole entire Yiddishkeit at this point in time, it's all about that we're heading towards Gula. It's goal-oriented yeah. Yiddishkeit. It's, you yeah. might argue it's different than how Yiddishkeit was for many generations beforehand. And with that, it kind of drives with it, Mimela, because we're anticipating and waiting for Mashiach. So of course, we give tzedakah every day. Of course, we're kochling in every day. Of course, of course, we're realizing that what's the whole idea of Mashiach is that the Eivishter is going to be revealed in the world, and therefore it's important to be Mizbainen, and what's Kabbalah's El Malchus Shemaim, when you're saying Shema, etc., etc. All these things kind of follow when you, it's almost like, this might be an incorrect perception, but it seems to me that if someone focuses on being a good Yid up to a point of, that he gives tzedakah every day, he's going to give tzedakah every day. If he focuses on, he wants to daven good every day, he's going to daven good every day. Make sure to learn every day, he's going to make sure to learn every day. If he calls in Moshiach, it's going to have everything. And I was pointing out that I feel like sometimes Baruch Hashem many Yidin are focusing on many, many of the important things, but when it comes to Moshiach, it's kind of put aside. But you're right, in a sense, you could say that there's a similar problem with the rest of many other things about Yiddishkeit as well. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying also, and I don't know the answer to that. I, I thought about Noite to say what you say also, meaning the Nakuda, now that the Rebbe added Mashiach to the dimension, not only was added to the dimension, Mashiach is everything now. And the Rechmeila, you need it for all aspects of Yiddishkeit. Right. Elamai, the question is, in approaching someone and starting off, do you, in Andre do you want to translate this that you see that people have a lack in other areas? Do you want to say it happened because we stopped cocking the Mashiach from the Rechmeila, we lost everything else? Or if I care, we just start lacking in, we had Taivas and the <coughs> whatever. I, I don't know. I'm not ready to, to clearly say that it's clear that because we stopped cocking the Mashiach. I mean, uh, I will definitely say that if we made sure to remain steadfast in our Imuna that Mashiach is coming imminently any day, any day now, it would definitely keep us in check in terms of the voice of Surah 
And it is definitely something about the fact that we are sometimes getting stuck in our voices that's causing us to feel like, so we don't necessarily have to focus so much about the whole imminence of Mashiach right now. We don't necessarily... It kind of chips away at that a little bit because we feel like, I don't know, you want to call it Mr. Consents. We want to, uh, we want to take it easy in life. We want it to, to have it nice and, uh, you know, take it easy, enjoy life, make some money, you know, live well. Vachulu, vachulu, and, and that takes precedence over what's the imminent mission that's, that life is all about and worthwhile for, etc. It definitely affects it. I hear what you're saying. No, Mimele, where does that leave us? And particularly, because you're a mechanic, I wanted to ask you this. I feel, Heintigeteg, people that, that are up and coming, coming out of what's called the system, coming out of the, the Chinuch after they learned in Cheder for so many years, after they learned in Yeshiva, and Shlichus and Smicha, you know, they're a, a grown-up uh, person, and they have various comments and thoughts on the system, on how is the Chinuch system doing, is it doing well, what are its advantages, what are its faults, etc., etc., it's a whole new style nowadays to be very rebellious about that. It's a whole style to have tininess and minus about what's terrible in the Chinuch system and how some things are really not okay and how this messed me up and that messed me up. There's a whole uh, gang like that as well. All sorts of op-ed articles going up about uh, this problem in the Chinuch system and that. Oh, it's a whole. So I'm going to chip in with my own two cents in that, in that regard. I'm going to get to Mashiach and Gula. Regarding to Mashiach and Gula. That I feel that myself growing up my feelings of, eh, we don't necessarily have to talk too much about Moshiach and take it too seriously, have been substantiated and validated by many of my various mechanchim throughout the years. Whereas they, I feel, could have and should have encouraged and shown me how, no, specifically, we have to think out of the box. Go on, figure something out. What's your idea? What do you think we can do? What is the next step? Can we really get for real about this? Whereas they maybe could have taught that a little bit more like that, I feel like many of them perhaps even were bringing up the topic of Moshiach and far bringing about it and teaching about it. But it, all, it often, when I think back, it often felt like, yeah, it's all nice and well, but ad kach, up to this kind of point. You want to get really, really real about it? No, no, I, I, I got to go home now. Uh, if I bring it is over, good night. Uh, tomorrow we're going back to learn and uh, life goes on. And like... There's a certain point of like we get really about we get really real about Mashiach, but we don't get really, really, really real about Mashiach. And I feel like that's something that maybe could and should be improved. In, and I want to hear your opinion about this. That ideally, more mechanchim can can do more research about this topic and figure out what it's all about, and ideally raise the the the, the upcoming generation to feel like no, think out of the box, ask questions. Figure out what it's all about. Don't be satisfied with just the status quo of, oh, this is what being a Yid is about. This is what being a Lubavitcher Chassid is about. This is what we learn. This is how we grow up. This is how we get married. We go out on Shlichus, and that's it. And then we grow old, and we pass away. <laughs> and that's it. That's the story of our life. No, how about we're about the, the, the most updated missions that the Rebbe has told us about, and that they're still there, sitting, outstanding. You know, the Rebbe's Kaviochel, if we want to describe it the, this way, the Rebbe has the classified file, declassified, sitting on his desk, still waiting, from Chav Ches Nissen, 28 years ago, it's still sitting there, waiting to be taken up and fulfilled. Guys, there's a mission to actually complete this for real, like, factually, what's the plan, what's the schedule, what's the first step, the next step, let's talk about it, let's figure out, let's do it. What do you think we can do so that the, 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 the next batch of, of students can be put on a path of, yes, go for it. Yes, explore it fully. Don't hold back and ask questions and figure it out all the way. Okay, before you moved on to Chinuch, yeah. you said, what's Bechlal should we, should, you know, what Bechlal should we do? And then you said, no, let me ask about Chinuch. And I can answer both questions with the same Nakuda and similar to what I was telling you before. Um, you mentioned again here in the question the assumption that you had... You had teachers, chassidus teachers, and taught you everything. But when it came to Mashiach, 
It wasn't real, real, like you said. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll definitely um, add to that that there were some teachers that actually the did break that the pattern. Ends. There were teachers that did break that parent that pattern. They were like they really gave me that sensation that no, be for real, for real, for real about it. And and kudos to them. Props yeah. to them. How was I gonna say that? That was told you in the first time that Chassidim from the beginning are hearing this call from the Rebbe, which is not maybe the er easiest thing to swallow. But definitely anyone who is a chassid and counts himself as a chassid, the Indian of Mashiach is just like everything else. And could someone be a little clueless about it? Maybe like you say, a heint, someone who was hanging around only here, not there, didn't hear about this part. So by M. Kumtai, so you could be a chassid without Mashiach. But any regular person who reads the sikhs, watches the videos, hears what's going on, you can't differentiate. You can't be giving off the feeling that putting on tefillin is real, real, real. Keeping Shabbos is real, real, real. Seeking chassidus before davening is real, real, real. And Mashiach is not so real, real. Right? It's, it's, it goes hand in hand. But we see it though. Also. We see it though. We see many chassidus. If it's MS, it's MS. You see Bimokhash. I don't know who you're speaking to, isn't it? I don't know. But any chassid, can a uh, good chassid, you can speak to him about Mashiach. You know, maybe, you, maybe you'll have different opinions of what to do about it. After that, it's fine. Have a, yeah, zikhar. But any, every chassid is thinking what, how, where, when, what's going on. If we're not asking ourselves that question, we're not asking ourselves if we said Rambam that day. You understand what I'm saying? Let, I understand me... there's an age when you're young and the first thing they tell you is start doing chita, start doing Rambam. And so you might, like, you know, it's a transformer of mice of a poil. You did this, you didn't do it. So for your checklist, you don't have... Maybe Mashiach, or maybe you just have like you learned in young, you went to the Mashiach or something like that. So we get the checklist. And to clarify, so Tzitzas yeah. and Tzdaka and Rambam are things that are Poel Mamash that bring Mashiach. You know, yeah. those those are part of the checklist, even of Poel Mamash of bringing Mashiach. Yeah. But yeah, where we're we going. It's very with this? clear that Sai for us alone to know ourselves at Chassidim. And Sai, when it comes to Chinuch, give me over to Chassidim. If it's real, then it's real. Everything is real. There's no real differentiation. If we're finding something missing, there's something missing in the whole picture. It's not a specifically... Let me, let me pull it a little bit maybe in this yeah. direction. Um, I think it's something that... It's, there's a phenomenon happening that perhaps a lot of the time we prefer to be politically correct and not talk about it. But Higi Azman, we, we got to ask this question already someday. Yeah. Um, we have a certain kind of perception that my yes we have a certain pressure that we feel about how is how are these ideas coming across to other people in the world to people from other communities to people that we deal with from, from work from business people from these Hasidim those Hasidim or Litvishers or Yeshiva whatever other people from other communities how is this kind of concept coming across to them? And that is vitally important, apparently, for many of us. We take that very seriously into consideration, and that kind of dictates and sometimes modifies um, how we feel about what we are taught from the Rebbe, the truths that we learn and believe and know is true. It seems we often can them, we minimize them, we obstruct them, we push them away, we consider them taboo based on how we feel these kinds of ideas are are catching on out there to a point where often enough it's just like it's part of our calculation how might people take this in this other community oh they're making fun of it oh they're saying it's ridiculous oh these people are laughing about it then there's no in the world that i can go there and i'm not going to go there in fact i'm going to take their side i'm going to show them how normal i am and how acceptable i am that i am also ridiculing this and I, I'm also taking this deep, important idea about Mashiach, and I'm saying, no, it's not true. That's not what the Rebbe says. That's not what, that's not what Hasidim believe. In fact, if there are other Hasidim that believe that, maybe they're crazy, maybe they're Meshuganers, maybe they don't know what they're talking about. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, kind of like echoing the politically correct uh, disclaimers that like, no, this is normal to say, and this is okay to say, and this is not so okay, and this is not so normal to say. And that's a part where I feel that also affects, like I said, perhaps Mechanchim, and eventually that trickles down to the students themselves, that we have a very strong nervousness about how some of these ideas and these truths that the Rebbe is teaching us from Torah, really. I mean, if we just studied it through, we would see it's, it's, it's clear and simple. Just learn the, the content. 
But um, then when it comes to discussing it between ourselves and making it practical and living with it and spreading it, I feel like there's a lot of modification happening there. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think about that? Is it true or not? And what can we do about that? I'm going to tell you the same that I told you till now. 100% that there's a lot of worry about the Mayim Rabriyas. And the Rebbe says on a few occasions that the insight of our generation is Al Yevish Aligim. But it's in everything. Al Yevish Aligim is in everything. The fact that we overcame that Al Yevish was with the help of the Rebbe spearheading it and leading us until it became normal enough, at least in our own minds, that now we're not embarrassed because it already became. Mashiach is relatively newer, if you want to say, to the scene than the other ones. And again, like we said before, it is after Gimel Tammuz. So the Yitzhahar is doing a big deal with the al Yerush about this. But not because specifically Mashiach. I mean, you want to get into, into nitty-gritty, you could find, I'm sure there's a special, there's a special uh, push against this Indian because this is what we're, the last thing we're waiting for. But in a more general sense of the idea, it's in everything. Some uh, are people are people not embarrassed to go on the street and start dancing. They went and cool you down the gas. And even that became less. So they don't do the same thing. It's only everybody. It's in everything. It's in a lot of behaviors became very you call it taboo, call what you want became. It's not just Mashiach. Don't have that shtaltz, don't have that uh, thing the way the way it should be. To feel biyachad. Like, so I don't I don't think these things are specifically Mashiach. I think this is, this is a general thing, and that has to be at, addressed from all sides. Now, again, you mentioned before, the first place to address it is through Mashiach and things like that. Um, perhaps, that I, perhaps, I'm not telling you um, for sure, perhaps the first way to address it is through Mashiach, or the way to address it is also through everything else that the, the Rabbeim are a raising chassidim through the teaching of Kabbalah, so Mr. Snefesh, it's what it means to have it's all... Yeah, it's all, it's all connected. I don't see this as a special, unique idea. That I guess, is, comes I guess what, what bothers me more, perhaps, yeah. on the topic of Mashiach is like, for example, let me ask you, how do you resolve this, this apparent stira or this very, very disturbing uh, question, or, or I don't know what you want to call it, where so many sikhis that the Rebbe discusses about Mashiach and particularly often ends off about Mashiach. And then in the end of the Sikha, the Rebbe describes some things which it's almost like hard to tell. Is the Rebbe saying that it is so or it will be so? Is it a future? Is it a prediction? Is it a Yehiratzin? Is it a wish? But many, many times the Rebbe described about the coming of Mashiach and Geula in a present tense as if it is here, or it's immediately, right now, Tekef Umiyad Mamosh. Now, I don't know about you, and I don't know about anyone else. I was taught from a very, very young age that a real Yid, a Chassid, really believes in the Tzadikim of their generation, really believes in the Moshe Rabbeinu of their, of their time. Ad Kadekach, that every word that a Tzadik says is complete and real and true, and sometimes you don't understand it, you don't see how it is so, but it really, really, really is so. And I can understand that perhaps different people have different degrees to which they, uh, you know, adapt to that, that they can work with that. I was taught, like, literally, 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 to just believe what the tzaddik tells you. Every word is gold, every word is fire. So when I hear that the Rebbe says about Geula, about Moshiach, take it Yad Mamosh, not just one time, but over and over and over and over and over and over again, years ago, okay, we're talking 30 years plus by now, to me it starts forming a very disturbing question. In fact, this is the exact question that has been bothering me, you know, in the recent past up to a point where, where I started doing this stuff over here right now. Yeah. The question that's bothering me is, the Rebbe says, Gu'ula now, 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 but another day and another year and another year and another year goes by where it seems like not take it for me if you can say such a thing. It, not, it didn't happen right now. Moshiach did not apparently, etc. Again, it, it could be heresy what I'm saying because the Rebbe says take it for me That might mean that the reality of the matter is that it really is take it for me back then. And the fact that it doesn't seem that way or the fact that the reality doesn't seem to match up to that, that could be a problem in me or in the world. But the reality, etc. You know, we can go there, we can discuss about that. But it, for me, it poses a huge question. It's almost like profanity. It's almost like Shem Hashem Lashov, <laughs> in a sense. Like, how could such a word of the Rebbe exist, that Moshiach, to have happened already, take of Miyad Mamash, back then, 
And here we are, you know, the more time that goes on, the more profane it seems that the situation is. It's almost like the Rebbe says Geulo was already taking me at back then. It's almost like it has been desecrated. What has been desecrated? The Rebbe's words? The situation. I don't, it can't be that the Rebbe's words are desecrated, you know, but it almost seems like they are, unless maybe we do something about it. So this is the way how I deal with it. I don't know how to answer that question. The Rebbe said, take of miyad mamosh. Maybe we have to understand that it means something else. I, some people say that. I, I prefer to say no. When the Rebbe said, take of miyad mamosh, it means take of miyad mamosh. It seems to me like it didn't happen right then and there. Okay, well then you know what? That's on me. That's something that I have to do. That's maybe my avoid. If I do some, that's maybe because I didn't wake up 28 years ago and wake up and demand, Tati Mami, let's make this Mashiach thing for real. And then maybe when I was 10 years old, when I was 12 years old, when I was a bar mitzvah boy, when I was in yeshiva, when I was growing up, when I got married, all these years, I could have, and if I, maybe if I did really wake up and put my foot down and demand and do everything I could to bring Mashiach, then maybe it would have desecrated the take it from Yad Mamash a little bit less. But how do you resolve the fact that the Rebbe said, take it from Yad Mamash, and it seems like here we are now. This is why I'm particularly bothered with the topic of Mashiach, and what's different in that topic more than other things, is that another, each day that goes by, you know, it tightens more and more the pain of this, of this desecration, so to speak, of the words that the Rebbe says. Okay, a part of goodness. It's like a whole in, different Indian. You went into now. Could Correct? be, yeah. yeah. I was, I guess, trying to explain why Something I focus on a more personal level. Per- but, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also a question. What do you think all, about how that works? Growing up without having any sort of seek madrich in how to understand and learn these sikhs, Baruch Hashem, we went to yeshiva that didn't have too many staff that were busy explaining all these things to us. So, and Baruch Hashem, for that, we were able to, to drink directly from the source, from the Rebbe. And obviously, the chinuch, like you said before, we have is everything that Rebbe says is Ames Chai Bekaim Lad And by the way, let's let's take a moment to point that out as well. The fact that asking this question, hey, mm-hmm. how come the Rebbe says take of miad mamosh, but it doesn't seem like take of miad mamosh? It was almost like it was taboo to ask that even. It wasn't even possible, or there was no one to go to to ask and get a satisfactory answer about that. And he gives man that we should just lay it on the table for what it is and deal with it. Anyway, yeah, continue. Uh, and this that our brains send us messages that seem to kind of you know conflicting whatever the fancy words you use for this Indian, which are probably words that I wouldn't use for describing it. Um, our questions that the brain sends, and how do we react to it? So either we push it out of our mind and we continue doing, and the simple things you say. Well, I do understand, I don't understand, it's obviously MS, the Mashiach will come, and the one that I'll see, the Mashiach that I'll be able to see in my eyes, so all these things will be understood, everything uh, will find its place, how all these words were, to the T, MS and MS, the words, the Shekhinim and the Bersh, the And I guess as the more time passes, the more you learn to live with this paradox and this confliction, the less, you know, you already, you already dealt with it. You, you, you're being, you know, once once you answer that answer, that answer has like a believable application. He goes, right? And that's the thing. So, I don't think uh, we did answer it. We just figured right. out how to ignore it or push it aside. The fact that nobody answered you is because I don't know if people have the answers. So you're right. You get older and later suddenly you hear about this sheet. Oh, and this guy says, that's oh, yeah, and this guy says, that's oh, yeah. Maybe that's a my look because they're trying to deal with it, trying to explain it. But let me ask you this. What is so wrong with this as an answer, Le Marshall? What if someone answered, you know what? The Rebbe said, take it from Yad Mamash, that's for sure real. The fact that it doesn't seem that way is not okay. And the answer is, me and you right now, we got to do all we can so that it isn't anymore a desecration of that reality. So that the Rebbe's take of Yad Mamash really means take of Yad Mamash a little bit more than if we just sit back, relax, and move on in life. D- does that work? Like, the answer is, we got to make it have been Take of Miad Mamash. That doesn't make that much sense in terms of chronology. But you know what I mean? The answer is no, let's do something about it. And I feel like this let's do something about it, getting really, really real about Mashiach, didn't always seem like it was always necessarily a thing on the table. It's almost like we would answer possibly many, many other things except that. Except saying, okay, well, you know what? Let's ma- let's change that. Let's make it a reality. That was not necessarily accessed so much in Higiyazman, we should. 
And instead we, uh, you know, ebed in all sorts of other directions. We don't know how to answer that. We just got to continue and we kind of shove it aside and, and deal with it. And, and, and it's very hard sometimes. Some people like to laugh about that and make fun about that, you know. Oh, the Rebbe says like this and like that. The reality must be that it's true and we just have to have the correct perception about that. Ah, you guys aren't being realistic. You guys aren't being real. You know, there's a lot to make fun over there, etc., etc. Anyway, I'm rambling again. What, what were you saying? I have nothing to say. <laughs> Good. L'chaim, l'chaim. L'chaim, l'chaim. Yeah, you're right. So let's tack yeah, and do that. That's why the Rebbe gives us a, give the Rebbe a lot of nachas if we, if we take his words in that way. So maybe let's. We could, we could and should start trying to, to share and spread this kind of notion that like, hey, we could get for real, for real about Mashiach. I can list you off the top of my head 10 different things that if we wanted to really join forces, gang up, and get real about spreading Mashiach Kite out there in the world, we could and should, should have been doing already, you know, long ago. Chabad.org is slowly but, sure, but surely doing things of that sort, little by little. It could be faster, maybe. You know, if we were really on it, we would mama shturim out there, we would get on TV. We would get on radio, we would have ads in all sorts of our newspapers. We would be interviewing with every show out there. We would be sharing and spreading messages. We would have reached out already to the entire New York, to the entire every other state in the world. Uh, people, you know, we would be joining forces possibly with other communities and other circles of people and, and making projects together and then there would be so much happening already. We would spread the word in the whole world already that, hey, whatever happened with this notion of making a perfect world and having a great, you know, the best kind of world that we can all work together and make, it's not impossible. Let's go ahead and start doing that. Let's all do our part and then and, and working together with, even with governments and with uh, important people in politics, etc. So there's so much further we could and should have been doing already if we really wanted to get real and really go get out there with the message that the world is ready, it's a time for Mashiach already. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of a uh, inhibition that we still have that we need to get over, and Higyazman, if we could, we should, you know, what can me and you do? We're talking about two nukudas over here. Okay, go ahead. Before we were speaking about Bechlal, whether the Mashiach is real or not real, this kind of everything, you know, that we're, what the Rebbe says about Mashiach, if it's Emmets, and not to establish every Chassid is clocking your Mashiach and things like that. But you mentioned another in the dimension to it, but the, the idea about the Geval, the Geval Shabazet. Not just whether whether it's right or not right. So that we should be going crazy because you hear words like that uh, tw- 25 years ago, 27 years ago, and now uh, so we should have to be going a little Mashuga. It's almost like we became okay with that, and another year goes by, and another year goes by. What's so, up with that? It's so Geval. So, you're right, you're right, every chassid should be meshuggah, should be meshuggah inside. And the, my, the question is, if what the way to become Pai Mam, she's like, what should me and you and me and you be doing? Which I think is why you were, you made all, all your kaching, which is a good dezach, but like Rabbi uh, Libra of kachsachin, that it should be done with the Sayyidim Masudar. But the, the push behind it is going to have to be that everybody is very uh, excited and pushed. Right. And that's what he feels, that's what it's all about. It's not Poyo Mamish, I mean, you have clear directives from the Rebbe what has to be done on a day-to-day basis. And if you're looking on a more Gresser Farnam, you mentioned going to all the, all the speaking to people and, uh, I don't know, you said going to TV uh, channels and this, whatever, whatever, that would probably have to be done on a more Seydim Masudar. But if there's no person making the Seydim Masudar, then you make the Seydim Masudar. <laughs> Which I think what you're trying to do, no? I guess in my own little sense, I'm trying to make a bit of a you know, so trying to plant the idea out there that let's go out, the let's thing go is out with this. Like I told you, already, there's a lot of people who have a lot more know-how. They might be missing the the push and the excitement to do oh. it, but they have more knowing, partially because they're aware of the Rebbe's is much more in many, many different areas, even in these areas themselves, even though we might be big kachers, we might not know the sikhs, so uh, inside and outside the way we're supposed to. And we also have Heroes from the Rebbe. It's not like this Indian of Mashiach came 
as a last, like the, the last Sikha we heard was just this new, everything we know about Mashiach Gula came like in one week. No, it was definitely a build up. It was, it was a build up. Huge and you build see, up. let's say the Dugman, let's say <laughs> one that ever says Mashiach should be here already. There's no explanation why Mashiach's not here. What happened the next week? The next week, they never sat down and said another Sikha. The next week, they never sat down another Sikha. Right? So, even though with this idea of how come a Sheikh's not here, it's. The, the way how I describe it is yeah. that the burning gewald of the yeah. previous Sikha, when the Rebbe said, no, how could it possibly be? was still sitting there. Right. It and was still it burning. Come out and came on the table. And, and, and it's almost like the Rebbe was. I don't know, again, I can't read what was going on in the Rebbe's holy mind, but the way it seems to me is that that burning fire is and was and continues to still be there, and right. it's just like, what? it's almost like maybe the Rebbe is looking, what's the next angle that I can get back to that, because that's like what's really, really important right now. So, okay, we have to take it from the top, we start a new Dvartero, we take it from another angle, but it's not like that went away or that now it became okay right. or anything like that. that. You know, it's I'm saying we burning. have a little chinuch from the Rebbe and also how to deal with that attitude. You understand what I'm saying? It's not like it just happened in one moment and then we don't know anymore what to do. Right. It was over. We, we watched the Rebbe 100%. Everything he said before is maskim. It's, it's has to pain us, has to make us crazy, has to make us cusses and all these things. But we, the Rebbe also is madr chemachanuchas, what cusses means. And what it means to go crazy, and how you're speaking about Mashiach should be, and all all this matter. Right. I think it, it might be more of a practical thing rather than a whole hayrah thing. I think it's just practically speaking. If you're just going to sit there and scream and scream all day, that's not necessarily going to achieve. If you really are bothered by the by that point, then chances are we need to find proper ways how to get the message ac across. But if you could, if we could say so, kaviyocho, it was definitely a point of immense kaviachal frustration to the Rebbe, I think, the fact that getting this message out there, even to us chassidim, was mm -hmm. very, very, very hard, if not sometimes impossible. It's almost like, if we want to describe it this way, sometimes the Rebbe was telling us these things about the imminence of Geula already being there, and we just got to trigger it and make it happen. And it's almost like we were sitting there either not hearing, not listening, not believing, and almost like going... Nah, come on, you're not real. It, really? Geula Mashiach? Nah. And we just wouldn't buy it. And it's almost like the Rebbe had to find ways how to get the message across. And some people here and there slowly but surely started catching on. Wait, really? You mean like Geula Mashiach? Really here? Whoa, amazing. But for many, many of us, even until today, Ad Hayyim, we're still in a phase of like, Nah, Geula Mashiach? What? Nah, come on. Not for real, really, really for real. And it's a tough, tough thing to kind of get past and get over and get through. Anyway, um, I wanted to uh, briefly approach this this other thing that I brought up earlier and just get your 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 thoughts on this. Well, hold on one second. Sure. So I think the pashas that's what you're doing to answer this nikunda is why you're trying to bring people together because a lot of people might have this feeling, but when you're alone, so it's hard to have the feeling. So it's limited what you could do. So you're trying to be ma'achid more and more people, so it should be more comfortable to discuss. When you do it as a rabbim, it's much easier to bring out same inside ideas, same inside your feelings, and much about rabbim, so it's like like hazak. I guess what I'm trying to do is, is try and help people feel, I guess with this program itself, this podcast, I'm trying to help people feel like this topic is happening. It's, it's an it's a active topic. Whereas it could have felt like maybe, eh, I don't know what's the story with all that. I don't know how to deal with all that. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's kind of controversial. I don't know where that's going. Trying to start addressing it and showing people it's okay to address this. It's okay to open up this conversation. It's okay to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. Question is, what is your thoughts? What can we do next in terms of what's known as the whole controversy about the so-called Meshachistin, so-called Antis. If the Rebbe is said to be Chayvekayam, or if the Rebbe is said to be Zia, passed away. If the Rebbe, if we go to the Oihol, or if we go to 770, if Yechiyad void, or if uh, of blessed memory, etc., etc. This is something that uh, has, you know, for the better or for the worse, kept us very busy for a long time, and we're still fumbling about it. Actually, I personally feel like perhaps it's been at its, at its most intense in years past, 
Right now, it could be, I think we're at an advantageous point where it's almost like we're a little bit past all that. It's almost like there are still many people and many chassidim that in various situations, it still we get triggered by that in many situations. But in some, you know, and maybe the next generation, you know, maybe the younger up and coming generation, we're kind of like, look, it's been fun for 20 years, 25 years, it's been fun arguing and finding, fighting about all that. But now, tachlis, you know, this isn't helping anyone. And to be perfectly honest, it seems like many people in the new up-and-coming generation hardly even care if you want to describe it that way. You want to say yechi, say yechi. You want to say the Rebbe's chayvikayim, say the Rebbe's chayvikayim. You want to not say yechi, don't say yechi. As long as we're moving on, we're doing something. But what do you think we can do to address this whole topic and uh, once and for all get past the header Avas Chinam, resolve the reason why Golos is here in the first place, which is Sinas Chinam, and w what's your advice, uh, you know, that, and again, in terms of Chinuch, the next generation of students are constantly very, very sharply tuned into this. How intense do we have to be about this? How dafka do we have to be about this? They look up to teachers, to Bechanchim, to Rebbeim. What do they say? Are they very, very anti or are they very, very mishichist? Are we supposed to respond in this way or that way? And they're very tuned into the whole politics about it. So what can we start showing to people a new derech about this? Okay, first of all, like you said, you notice yourself that the intense machlek uh, as seems to be already on its way down, on its way out. And in this machlek there's two parts. There's the machlek as the Shem Shemayim, and the machlek as Shein Shem Shemayim. Like I said before, there's a true chassid who's bothered about Mashiach, part of being a chassid about Mashiach, and then unfortunately there's what we're not doing anything in chassid like we're supposed to. It, it expresses itself in this and you know so. So the original Machlegas had two aspects. There's definitely a personality difference. Maybe it's not a good way of describing it, but there's two characters. There's a character from Meshachis, there's a character of Anton. They both have their place and throughout all the sikhas about this idea of Amata Lamaila, Amaila Lamata, to the Chibra of Shnehem. It's very clear that the two, the two ideas behind them are two approaches, two general approaches. Which each have their Makim in the in the Geula, in Yiddishkeit, and everything. The fact that we became machlekes with all the negativity, that's not, that has no place in, in al Chassid's things. Could it be that it started good and it ended up not? But Pashtas not. But Pashtas, anything not good started from not good. It started, it doesn't start off on the right foot and end up on the left foot. It started like Chila. We're not proper Chassidim. We don't think before we do something what the Rebbe wants from me, what Hashem wants from me. And it's all across the board. And it came to out of this fair, year also. To be fair, after Gimel Tamos, yeah. it was a very, very, very difficult traumatic event. You know, to be fair, some chassidim maybe Pasha didn't know how to deal with it, and they were very emotionally. Okay. If we're looking to be malamets close, then it's not their hate. But now we're talking but, about yeah. now how to deal yeah. with it. So now there's know, no excuse. You're saying now, now for sure. Now there's machlek shabaza has no room. Sinna hatred who has no room. Which one's right or wrong? So I say the general approach. You have to recognize that there are two nakudas over here, and you have to recognize mashayish baza, mashayim baza. That's in general nakuda. It's not the was that not be able to sit with people, talk with people, do business or whatever, talk, have any relationship with them. That's what, 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 where, where does the chassid come to that? Come to come by a chassid. Such a thing. So, but well, let's Hashem, a lot of that went off for two two reasons. First of all, like we got over it, no good. We saw it, no good came out of the, all the fighting. Another unfortunate reason is that. People don't care as much. That's another as time goes thing. on. Which we spoke about before. But well, it's not just this. <laughs> the whole thing, like yeah. on the invitation doesn't make a difference. It's right, what you want? Not because I realize the Maila that it's in each of them. It's realized because uh -huh. it's right in them, which is it's a darsal awesome thing. Uh, saying it would have been better perhaps huh? if people were dafka about it as long as they really yeah, care you know, about you it. So you have the most about you know. Right. It's not good to be a, a wishy washy kind of guy, you know. Right. You have to know if if Taita demands to be wishy washy, then okay. But right. If it's you're wishy washy because you don't care. Right. And Leon Novi wasn't that. timing to them that you should believe in the Abishter. Yeah. He was timing to them. Why are you just one day yeah. here and one day there? Figure yeah. out what you want and stick with it. Yeah. So yeah. right now, there should be, so we have to have to clarify that. We should realize that there's two approaches in everything. And the Rebbe speaks throughout Navlam Beis. And the point is, Chibr Shnehem Yachad. The Rebbe always says everything has to have all the milas. Um Now, Mitzah, the Chinuch of them, the practical aspects, like you say, do you write this? Do you say this? Do you write that? There should be, now I don't know if you'll be able to say you'll have a common Hayra for the whole of Babish Bechal. But when it comes to Chinuch, 
when it comes to chinuch bechlal, every moisid, so moisids that don't have a, a very strong character, what happens is that each teacher and each mashbiya and each whatever sort of teaches his way, which anyway you have the bacher for only one year, which the Chameleon might switch, which is not the healthiest way to work okay. out. The best thing is that a moisid bechlal has its sheet that it shares with amongst all its staff and they give over. It's much better for Mechanchim to give over a clear message than right. to do something fuzzy and unclear and let the, let the Mechanchim figure it out on themselves. Right. That's not the better. The better approach is that the Moisid Mechal should have a, a derech and what it teaches its Talmidim in, in, in clarity. But you see, Taka, some Moisids, more, more and more, and the newer Moisids that we have that in their approach to this Indian. I see. Um, so, like, let's take one situation that happens sometimes, which is a chassid that says, I don't want to be combative, I don't want to be argumentative, I don't want to cause a chilo this or that. Um, I want to try to understand and tolerate and turn a blind eye as needed at all times so that things work out. But here's what's happening, is that I'm going out on talucha somewhere, and I'm trying to give a menschliche message over to these people, and then suddenly when it comes to dancing, these other bachrim that came along are starting to sing chi, and they have their yellow pins, and it, 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 I feel that it, it turns people off, it makes people upset, and it bothers me to such a point that I feel I have to intervene, I have to speak up, I have to defend and clarify some things. You know, because otherwise it's going to be a chilul Lubavitch, or it's going to be a chilul of the Rebbe. I have to say, no, this is not okay, or I have to point out to people that we don't accept that, or that we don't work with that, or that we can't, or, or I have to ask them to leave, or, you know, and then it seems like, there we go, the machalikis continues, like you said, the header of communication, the fact that we can't work together, the fact that we have to tell them to leave, and varfar, or other situations where someone claims, I don't want to necessarily cause anything that looks like machlekes, but when this and this happens in this situation, if it's by the Lag Boimer parade and this happens, or if it's on Shlichus and my shul and that happens, and you know, it's my Chabad house and uh, I'm trying to do this and this and that, and along comes this guy and he does the other, I have to be the Balabas here, I have to intervene, I have to clarify what the story is. So it seems like, you know, Chassidim really wants to innocently work through things in a Shalom Dika way, but then it seems situations push them to a certain kind of a wall where they think they have to say, they have to point out and they have to, you know, say, send them out, or we can't deal with it, or we don't hold of that, or, and then we're back to square one. What can you advise in those situations? So, like we said before, we have to recognize that in this argument and uneasiness between each other, there's two aspects. There could be an aspect that's just a, char a different character and a different approach of how to see something, and then there could be something that's tackled So when we find ourselves getting getting upset, getting, uh, you know, this idleness about something, we need to find, we need to ask ourselves, why come to us? You have the good recognition of what the Rebbe wants in the, in the bigger picture of things, and not just because of a one thing, you know, you have to be, ever, like I said before, a real chassid. Chassid are not, are not narisha. Chassid, chassid, chassid will never accept the idea of narisha. Right. This is Nishkin Tibbish. You have to be a smart person. You have to know, uh, not just be a balyash, that all you think about is yourself. It doesn't talk. Uh, so first, be able to differentiate. And even after you differentiate, I mean, it still lakes the chab idea that, that they're the ones causing the machla, they're the ones who are not chsidim, they're doing things. You need to have a, a second opinion. What I mean, a second opinion is a mashpia. Very important. And the mashpia, as we like the Rabbi says, is that if he's doing with the malach Hashem Tzvakas, then he should be your mashpia. Because by a true chasid, you don't have these these issues. True chassidim don't have these issues. I'm not saying nobody make mistakes. I'm saying chassidim are chassidim people that everyone is okay. Yeah, some people make mistakes and some just about more in them. But when it comes to you personally, so if you so since you're not yeah, so it's, you need to have mashpia to give you. And you can't say hadracha on every sit and sit, but the general hadracha, and you'll see by the hadracha you get from a emes chassid, he'll teach you how these things to to address in a much more positive and correct way. And is it possible, therefore, in that kind of situation, that let's say, the one who feels that he needs to get up and say Yechi and the Rebbe and the Shlita, etc., he might realize or he might understand that actually in this situation, even though I feel so important, that this is so important, but because of what my Mashpia directed me, or because I analyzed myself and I felt that I got all ungrates about it because I feel a little bit dafka about it, then actually I need to curb that and not necessarily get up and say that and hold that back. And conversely, 
the person that feels like the one who's getting up and saying ichi or saying this or that is causing a disturbance and is causing a chilul and is causing this and that, and I feel like I have to intervene and cut in and change and stop it, but because my mashpia instructed me such and such, or because I feel that I'm feeling a little bit ungraced about it, maybe I have to realize I don't want to cause even more chilul Lubavitch by intervening in such a way that I'm sending them out, or I'm showing that there's piru, that, that there's disagreement. Yeah, it Perhaps. I don't know why you have to spell it out clear. I don't know if you're trying to say that it has to work both ways. I'm not sure. Meaning, you're, I don't, every case has to be judged, b'chalos. but the general hadracha you, you get from real chassidim shayidin... Because I feel like, is, like some chassidim get real stuck. Real chassidim are not, are not the people who are causing all these problematic stuff. When, okay. when there's problems, it can't come from it can't come from devotion to the Rebbe. But you see, that's problems. exactly what some people say. Doesn't mean we don't have a shita. Doesn't but that's, what, exactly, a shita. that's, that's what they say. They say, look, this is, he's not really a chassid. You see, when he's doing this disturbance over here, he's not really a chassid. He's not really a you, real devotion. You, you hear chassidim saying that? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. You hear chassidim saying that? Do you hear... Oh, uh, <laughs> good point. Yeah. Okay, uh, look. You have to have your mashpia, the emissa, not who, someone who finds favor in your eyes. You know, like that's not called mashpia if you chose him because he's going to tell you what you want to hear. Mashpia, you're believing him because he he finds favor that there is Aisha the Kim. He's a man who follows the rabbi, follows the Ebesh, the Ebesh, the Ebesh, the And uh, you'll get the right, you'll get the proper hadracha. Besides the fact that you, you, a healthy person on his own could already know a little his and know exactly from what it But in addition to that, like that I said, you always have to have mashviya, especially in these inyanim, since you hear so, so much about it, it's important that you get hadracha. You said, I'm so sorry. Good. Wonderful. Shkayach Reb Zalman, I really appreciate you two coming on our, uh, on our show, on our podcast over here. <laughs> appreciate your time and uh, thank you for all of your thoughts and your input and I hope that we can continue doing this this is not the end of our discussion this is if anything only the beginning uh, from here in Mirza Hashem we should keep on spreading this onward and people that we see and meet and greet we should say hey look this is happening we're talking about these things we're asking the questions we're addressing the issues and now we can proceed to get really active about it join forces come up with a plan what's the next step what's the next step and keep going and going and going as the song goes until we win this goal's war and uh, and Moshiach and Gula become an, a real reality. Azikh Razakh, Azikh Razakh. Yes. Shkayach Yisrael for, uh, to you. for what you're doing on behalf of Am Yisrael. <laughs> and uh, fine, and Moshiach will come and you'll look back at, uh, at all these podcasts with Lach and Abyss and all Oh, but yeah, you'll laugh, and then they'll come to you my mind and say, "They are good. They are good." <laughs> an extra slice of love, yes, and all good as that. Amen. Thank okay. you very much. Go ahead, Mashiach. Now, thanks.